Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we are delving into The State of Affairs by Esther Perel. Released in 2017, this provocative book shines a new light on the complex issue of infidelity. While cheating is universally frowned upon, it remains a prevalent part of human behavior. Perel boldly explores this paradox, prompting us to reconsider our views on what is widely seen as an unforgivable sin. By asking the challenging question, is infidelity really such a bad thing? She invites readers to look beyond conventional wisdom and moral judgments to understand the multifaceted nature of love, loyalty, and desire. Esther Perel, a renowned psychotherapist, brings her vast experience counseling couples through a spectrum of issues, including betrayal, trust, and forgiveness. Her insights are drawn from over a decade of working intimately with people navigating the complexities of modern relationships. Additionally, Perel's ability to speak nine languages and her role as an organizational consultant enrich her perspective, making her analysis both nuanced and universally relevant. As the host of the popular podcast Where Should We Begin?, she has further solidified her place as a leading voice in discussions about love and partnership in today's world. The State of Affairs is a must-read for anyone interested in the dynamics of relationships, whether you are in a faithful partnership, have experienced infidelity, or are somewhere in between. It is also a valuable resource for those assuming roles such as mistresses or manstresses, offering a compassionate yet unflinching examination of the roles we play and the choices we make in love. Join us as we unpack the insights and provocations of Esther Perel's groundbreaking work, shedding light on the enduring mysteries of the human heart. The State of Affairs, Rethinking Infidelity. Introduction, Rethinking Infidelity, A Closer Look at the Ultimate Betrayal. Imagine asking any individual in a committed and monogamous relationship in the United States about their stance on infidelity, and you'll likely hear how it's seen as the ultimate betrayal, a trust-shattering act that's unforgivable. And yet infidelity remains a pervasive issue, with countless individuals straying from their committed relationships. Curiously, if you hunt for people who have remained entirely faithful, you'll find the numbers surprisingly low among adult Westerners. So, this begs the question, are those who cheat inherently malicious? Or is there a possibility that our collective understanding of infidelity needs a thorough re-evaluation? The journey we're about to embark on uncovers this complex web of questions with real-life stories at its core, shedding light on the facets of infidelity that often stay hidden. We delve into the impact of infidelity on one's self-perception how being cheated on, or being the one who cheats, can profoundly shake the very foundation of how individuals view themselves. It's a jarring intrusion into what many consider being the bedrock of their identity. Moreover, we challenge the conventional disdain for jealousy by uncovering its nuanced role in relationships. Instead of viewing jealousy solely as a toxic emotion, we explore its potential to signal deeper needs and desires within a relationship thereby providing a chance for growth and understanding between partners. Lastly, amidst the transparent ethos championing open communication, we propose a rather provocative notion. Sometimes, keeping secrets is the healthier option. This exploration does not endorse deceit, but suggests that in certain contexts, maintaining privacy can serve as a protective layer for the relationship's emotional integrity. So, Are we ready to dive into the depths of infidelity? Not with scorn, but with an aim to understand its intricacies. It's time we look beyond the obvious, venturing into the hidden corridors of human relationships, where the answers are not as clean-cut as we might wish. Part 1. The Gray Areas of Infidelity. Navigating the Complex Landscape. The question of how many people step outside their monogamous commitments is a curiosity that many of us harbor. Is infidelity a deviant anomaly or a widespread practice? 
The challenge in answering this question lies in the nebulous nature of what constitutes cheating. The parameters of infidelity have long been a matter of debate, and the digital era with platforms like Tinder has only muddied the waters further. Does a flirtatious exchange online cross the line? How about interactions with a sex worker or a lap dance? And what of relationships that defy traditional sexual orientations? It's these complexities that have led to wildly divergent statistics regarding infidelity rates in the United States, with findings ranging from 25% to as high as 70% of the population engaging in some form of infidelity. The consensus, though, is that the numbers are climbing, influenced significantly by an increase in women exploring their sexuality. Revealingly, a study from 2007 by psychologist Rebecca J. Brand suggested that when broader actions, including romantic inclinations and physical intimacies, excluding intercourse, were included, college-aged women outpaced men in infidelity rates. Despite the blurry lines defining it, infidelity tends to manifest around three core elements, secrecy, sexual chemistry, and emotional attachment. Often the presence of one, or more, of these factors is a telltale sign of unfaithfulness. Secrecy invigorates an affair with an added thrill, but the aftermath of being kept in the shadows inflicts the deepest wounds on the betrayed. The revelation of a partner's clandestine actions tends to hurt more than the act of infidelity itself. Interestingly, a genuine sexual encounter is not a prerequisite for betrayal. Engaging in landmine territories of flirtation carries a sexual charge that rivals and sometimes exceeds the transgression of physical relations. Emotional entanglement, then, is almost invariably a component of infidelity, with its impact often surpassing the physical elements of an affair. It's this intertwining of the heart, more so than the body, that delivers the severest blow in the landscape of betrayal. Part 2. The Deep Wound of Infidelity a crisis of identity for all involved. Infidelity strikes deep, not just because it betrays trust, but because it profoundly disrupts the identity of both the person who strayed and the one betrayed. For many of us, our relationships form the bedrock of our identity. Our sense of love, partnership, and trust hang in the balance. When infidelity comes into play, these crucial elements are cast into doubt shaking the very essence of who we believe we are. This disorientation stems from how closely tied our identities are to our roles within relationships. Many people who experience betrayal by a long-term partner report feeling adrift, uncertain of who they are without their other half. This feeling often morphs into a corrosive self-doubt, with individuals wondering if their inadequacies led to their abandonment. The intertwining of identity and partnership is especially pronounced in the United States, where romantic love is often held up as the pinnacle of personal achievement. In contrast, when exploring perspectives on infidelity with a community of Senegalese women, the author found their sense of self-worth was less tied to their partners and more rooted in their community. Hence, while betrayal was hurtful, it didn't fundamentally threaten their self-perception. However, The betrayal doesn't just affect those betrayed, it also turns the world of the betrayer upside down. Engaging in an affair might provide a temporary escape from reality, but being discovered forces the unfaithful partner to confront a harsh reflection of themselves through the eyes of their partner and society, a perspective that is often unforgiving and stark. Consider the tale of Costa a man who grew up determined not to mirror his domineering and unfaithful father. In attempting to be a dedicated partner, Costa suppressed his desires, adopting a rigid exterior with his wife. It was only through an affair that he felt reconnected with his passions, casting aside the identity he had constructed as a husband. Yet, this transformation came at a cost. In betraying his partner, Costa adopted a new, unwanted identity, that of a cheater, eerily mirroring the father he vowed never to become. Thus, infidelity does more than just disrupt relationships. It forces all involved to grapple with their sense of self, 
whether betrayed or betrayer, the journey through the aftermath of infidelity is as much about rediscovering or reconstructing identity as it is about healing from the betrayal itself. Part 3. Jealousy. The unspoken ingredient in the potion of love. In a world where the narratives of love and betrayal are as ancient as storytelling itself, it's curious to observe the modern Western aversion to acknowledging jealousy. The emotion that has driven the plots of timeless tragedies, from Euripides to Shakespeare, now seems conspicuously absent from the discourse on relationships in contemporary self help literature. This omission points to a broader cultural phenomenon. In Western societies, jealousy has become something of a taboo. When faced with infidelity, the conversation often tilts towards the betrayer's moral failings, while the raw, petty emotion of jealousy is brushed under the carpet to maintain a sense of dignity. However, this wasn't always the case, and it certainly isn't a universal stance. In Brazil, for example, jealousy commands center stage in couples therapy, especially in the aftermath of infidelity. Therapists Michelle Scheinkmann and Denise Werneck note that Brazilian partners, rather than posturing moral superiority, delve into the emotional intricacies of jealousy. They focus on understanding the dynamics of desire and reassurance. Acknowledging the human propensity for dishonesty without letting it overshadow their search for emotional truth. Interestingly, Western attitudes towards jealousy weren't always so repressive. Up until around 1970, jealousy was considered a somewhat normal, albeit unevenly expressed, emotion. Men could openly exhibit jealousy, whereas women were expected to suppress and navigate around it. The tides began to change as notions of sexual and social liberation took hold, leading to an era where expressing jealousy became a shared source of shame for both genders. Such a shift, however, might not wholly be to our benefit. Despite its discomforting nature, jealousy is inherently tied to vulnerability, a vulnerability that arises from deep emotional investment in a loving relationship. Dismissing jealousy outright risks ignoring an essential element of human emotionality and connectivity. Somewhat paradoxically, a dash of jealousy can serve as the glue that strengthens a relationship. Recognizing a partner's jealousy can function as tangible evidence of their love and commitment, a reminder that the emotional stakes are shared. The slight sting of jealousy when an outsider flirts with one's partner is not just expected, but in a way, reassuring. In this light, it's crucial to reassess our relationship with jealousy, not as a marker of pettiness or insecurity, but as a complex, sometimes uncomfortable, yet fundamentally human indication of love and connectedness. Part 4. The Delicate Balance Between Truth and Secrecy in Love In the complex tapestry of human relationships, particularly those woven in the West, love and honesty are often inextricably linked. The prevailing ethos dictates that true love cannot coexist with deception. This belief leads many to assume a moral obligation to disclose any acts of infidelity, regardless of the circumstances, but life, as it often does, presents scenarios that challenge this black and white reasoning. Take, for example, the dilemma faced by Lena. In the euphoria of a college reunion, she found herself entwined with a past flame, an incident that left her grappling with guilt and confusion. Her fiancé's history, marred by betrayal, made the prospect of honesty seem like a direct path to the end of their relationship. Was the fleeting mistake at the party worth jeopardizing the future they were building together? Yuri's situation brings another shade to this moral quandary. His marriage, strained by conflict, found unexpected solace in his secret affair. Rather paradoxically, Yuri's infidelity breathed new life into his marital relationship, improving both the frequency and quality of intimacy with his wife. The dilemma. Should he shatter this newfound harmony by revealing his extramarital escapades? There are indeed instances where the choice to remain silent could be considered the kinder route. Imagine a man on his deathbed, reconciling with his lifelong choices, 
contemplating whether to disclose a lifelong affair to his devoted wife in his final moments. Such a revelation would serve a dual blow, leaving her to mourn both the loss of her partner and the betrayal that defined much of their shared life. In this moment, the urge to confess might be more about easing personal guilt than sparing his partner's feelings. These vignettes challenge the notion that honesty is always the highest virtue in love. They underscore the complexity of human emotions and the potential consequences of our choices. The decision to confess an affair is loaded with potential repercussions, not just for the one bearing the secret but for all parties involved. It suggests that in matters of the heart, the reasons behind our desire to disclose the truth require as much scrutiny as the act of disclosure itself. Before lifting the veil on our transgressions, it's crucial to ask ourselves who we are truly seeking to protect or liberate, our partner or ourselves. Part 5. Infidelity. A window to alternate selves in a content relationship. It's a common belief that infidelity spells trouble in paradise, that straying from a partner is a clear indicator of deep-seated issues within the relationship. However, reality often paints a more nuanced picture. Indeed, individuals can be deeply ensconced in happy and fulfilling relationships, yet find themselves embroiled in affairs. This paradox challenges our conventional understanding of love, loyalty, and happiness. Consider the story of Priya, a woman enjoying a seemingly idyllic life with her husband Colin. Their life together checks all the boxes of marital success a loving family, a vibrant social life, and rewarding careers. Colin is everything society deems a good husband should be, making their relationship the envy of many. Yet, Priya found herself in an affair with an arborist, a man whose rugged appearance and lifestyle starkly contrasted with her own. This affair wasn't just a quest for novelty. It was not pursued out of dissatisfaction with her husband or their life together. Instead, the affair provided Priya with something intangible yet essential. An opportunity to delve into parts of her identity that had been long suppressed or unexplored. The risks involved in this liaison, the potential destruction of her marriage and the societal fallout were significant. Their clandestine meetings in cars or movie theatres, where the thrill of possibly being caught added an intense edge to their encounters, underscored the severity of the risk. Yet, for Priya, the allure of the affair lay not in the danger or the sexual excitement, but in the journey of self-discovery it represented. Priya's journey sheds light on a seldom-discussed aspect of infidelity, its role in exploring alternate identities. From a young age, Priya had dutifully played the role assigned to her achieving success in areas that others deemed important. However, she had never truly explored her desires or questioned the path laid out for her. The affair then served as a means to live vicariously through an alternate version of herself, one that could diverge from the expectations of being the good girl. This narrative invites us to rethink the function of infidelity in relationships. Rather than merely a destructive force, It can sometimes act as a conduit for personal growth and exploration. While this does not negate the potential harm caused by affairs, it highlights the complexity of human desires and the intricate ways in which people navigate their identities within the confines of long-term relationships. Part 6. When love and desire struggle to coexist, unraveling the complex ties to childhood. In an ideal world, Love and sexual intimacy meld seamlessly together, especially within the sanctity of a committed relationship. However, for some individuals, the fusion of love and sexual desire is fraught with complications, leading to behaviours that, on the surface, defy logic and undermine the essence of romantic partnership. Imagine a devoted and loving partner who, contradictorily, seeks sexual fulfilment outside the relationship perhaps through encounters with sex workers. This scenario begs the question, why would someone in an ostensibly loving and harmonious relationship step outside its bounds for sexual gratification? 
At the heart of this paradox is a profound disconnect between love and sex. Such is the story of Garth, a man who finds himself ensnared in a repeating cycle of passionate marriages that inevitably spiral into sexual disinterest and dysfunction. For Garth, the notion of engaging in sexual intimacy with a spouse feels not just unappealing but fundamentally wrong, compelling him to seek sexual experiences devoid of emotional attachment. This aversion to sexual intimacy within the context of love is not simply a matter of fading passion, a common enough trajectory in long-term relationships. Instead, it represents a deep-seated belief that sex and emotional connection are inherently incompatible. For many who share Garth's experience, the roots of this conflict trace back to childhood, to family dynamics that inadvertently set the stage for future relational turmoil. Garth's upbringing in an environment marked by violence and alcoholism thrust him into an adult role far too early, making him the protector of his mother and sibling. This early entanglement in his mother's emotional well-being fostered an over-identification with her, blurring the lines between caregiver and child. Terry Rial, a psychotherapist, notes that such scenarios are not uncommon. The early conflation of Emotional caretaking with parental figures often leads individuals to later transpose these dynamics onto their romantic partners, rendering sexual intimacy tinged with an incestuous undertone that becomes more pronounced with emotional closeness. Unfortunately, resolving this deep-seated trauma is not straightforward and may, in some cases, be insurmountable. Garth's story, marked by repeated attempts at marriage, only to be undone by his struggle with faithfulness and intimacy, underscores the lasting impact of childhood experiences on adult relationships. The challenge facing Garth and those like him lies not just in addressing behaviors symptomatic of this conflict, but in untangling the complex web of childhood experiences that underpin the difficult coexistence of love and sexual desire. Part 7. Exploring the Depths of Betrayal Beyond Infidelity Infidelity is frequently viewed through the lens of ultimate betrayal, a sin so grave it's condemned in the moral teachings of many societies. This perspective is deeply ingrained in Western thought, particularly within the Judeo-Christian tradition. It's a sin unique in its formation, one that can be committed in thought alone, without any physical action. Such is the weight of infidelity that a significant majority of Americans, according to a Gallup survey conducted in 2013, find it morally reprehensible, far more so than many other actions traditionally deemed unethical. But is stepping outside a committed relationship really the pinnacle of betrayal? When we delve deeper into the dynamics of human relationships, it becomes evident that betrayal can manifest in various, often more insidious forms. Neglecting a partner's emotional needs, demanding unreasonable sacrifices, and diminishing their worth can all constitute profound acts of betrayal. These behaviors can corrode the foundation of trust and respect that relationships are built upon, sometimes causing more lasting harm than a physical affair. Mona's story illustrates this point poignantly. Throughout her marriage to Dexter, she endured emotional neglect and manipulation. Dexter's actions, from planning trips that played on Mona's fears, to belittling her at every turn, exemplified a form of betrayal that left deep emotional scars. His fiscal support for the family while providing material needs further ensnared Mona in a situation where she lacked autonomy and self-esteem. The entry of Robert into Mona's life was a revelation. Here was kindness and esteem, feelings she hadn't associated with a male partner for years. Her affair was not so much an act of infidelity as it was a search for the emotional warmth and validation that was absent in her marriage. When Dexter discovered the affair, his reaction was to assign blame entirely to Mona, overlooking his own role in creating an environment where she felt undervalued and unloved. It raises the question, who truly committed the greater betrayal? Dexter's sustained emotional neglect and cruelty? or Mona's search for affection outside their marriage. This exploration into the nature of betrayal suggests that infidelity, while painful and destructive, is not the sole, nor always the greatest, act of betrayal in a relationship. 
Emotional abuse and neglect can inflict more profound and enduring damage, challenging us to rethink our perceptions of what constitutes the ultimate betrayal in love. Part 8. Navigating the Complexities of Consensual Non-Monogamy No Panacea for Infidelity In the tapestry of human relationships, the traditional depiction of a monogamous duo, pledged to exclusivity, often overshadows the multiplicity of forms partnerships can take. Among these, consensual non-monogamy presents itself as a compelling alternative, challenging the conventional bounds of fidelity and ownership in romantic connections. At its core, consensual non-monogamy hinges on transparency and mutual agreement. Partners maintain their primary bond while engaging sexually with others outside the relationship. Advocates of this model argue against the monogamous norm, suggesting that the ubiquity of infidelity, both in action and thought, indicates a natural predisposition towards multiple sexual partners. They question, why not then embrace and openly navigate these desires instead of cloaking them in secrecy? The debate with monogamists is perennial. Monogamists contest the viability of spreading one's emotional and sexual commitments across several partners, likening the singular devotion in marriage to an ultimate commitment. In contrast, non-monogamists draw parallels to the way individuals foster several friendships concurrently without diminishing the value or depth of any single connection. Thus, the discourse oscillates between contrasting views on love, commitment, and sexual fidelity. Despite the appeal and rational foundations of consensual non-monogamy, it is not devoid of challenges, particularly concerning infidelity. The misconception that adopting a non-monogamous structure inherently mitigates the risks of betrayal is a dangerous oversimplification. Infidelity, at its essence, often revolves around the violation of established boundaries rather than the act of seeking other sexual partners. Thus, even within the framework of consensual non-monogamy, there are lines that can be crossed, rules to be broken. One common rule is the prohibition of emotional entanglement with outside partners. The heart, however, proves to be as unruly as desire, and instances where one partner falls in love with an external partner are not rare. These occurrences underscore the complexity of human emotions and highlight that consensual non-monogamy is not inherently equipped to prevent the heartbreak of betrayal. The allure of transgressing agreed-upon boundaries underscores a vital truth. The challenge of fidelity extends beyond the confines of any relationship structure. Whether monogamous or non-monogamous, relationships demand a continuous negotiation of trust, boundaries, and desires. Consensual non-monogamy, for all its progressive ideals, is no silver bullet against the universal complexities of love and betrayal. Final summary. At the heart of many social and personal discourses, infidelity is often spotlighted as the ultimate transgression within a relationship, a clear violation of trust that many consider being the most grievous form of betrayal imaginable. However, A deeper dive into the nuances of infidelity reveals that the conversation surrounding it requires a broader, more nuanced perspective. Firstly, the act of disclosing an affair isn't always the most honest or beneficial path. Depending on the circumstances, choosing to reveal infidelity to a partner might do more harm than good, causing unnecessary pain and complicating the situation further. This raises important questions about the nature of honesty and compassion within a relationship, challenging the assumption that full disclosure is always the most ethical choice. Moreover, it's crucial to recognize that betrayal can manifest in myriad ways, many of which may not involve infidelity but can nonetheless inflict deep emotional wounds. Behaviors, such as belittling a partner, imposing unreasonable demands, or consistently neglecting a partner's needs and well-being, can erode the foundation of a relationship, sometimes more so than a physical or emotional affair. Interestingly, infidelity can sometimes serve as a catalyst for positive change within a relationship, especially when it brings to light issues of neglect, dissatisfaction, 
or the suppression of desires. In some cases, experiencing or even just perceiving a threat of infidelity can reignite feelings of passion and reawaken a sense of appreciation between partners. In summary, while infidelity unquestionably presents significant challenges to trust and intimacy, our understanding of it, as well as our responses to it, must be informed by a recognition of the complex emotional landscape of human relationships. Rather than viewing infidelity as a black and white issue, acknowledging the myriad ways in which trust can be broken or reinforced invites a more empathetic and constructive approach to navigating love and betrayal. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.